Recording audio through headset. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yes. Panorama view going on there. Widescreen situation. Okay. Okay. Ah. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. I say morning. It's still... It's still morning. Barely. But, but it is. It is Saturday morning. Which means a bunch of things. <sighs> the weekend... Lackadaisical time, families hanging out together, people having feasts and going on trips and doing cool things. How's everybody's weekend going? Hope yours is going very, very well. Mine is going pretty good. Oh, but before uh, doing too much else, uh, shall we begin running? Excellent. So, Prerogatives. I guess one prerogative that I have is to update my audience. And another prerogative is to make a couple of observations verbally so that I can play this back and sort of keep a bit of a verbal journal on my journey about how things are going with the podcast. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, let's welcome you officially. Uh, who knows, this may be the first episode that I publish. I'm almost in the state of mind where I want to just publish these, get the bulk of practice going, get better over time, and then, you know, just kind of let it go, you know? Not worry too much about the end game. I gave it 10 episodes, now we're on 11. Now I'm seriously considering just flaws and all, blemishes and all, just publish these and show people the rawness and the greediness and the triumph that is this podcast. So, uh, with that said, with that said, here we are. Give me one sec. My left arm really does kind of want to partake in the action here, so I might switch arms. I should probably do that if I want to get the most <clears throat> out of the arm component to this exercise form. It was left arm, left wing cam yesterday. Yeah, let's do that. Found a good way of looping the wires. Woo! Was that weird? <laughs> so, if I do that again... Boom! Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't be too crazy. I'm kind of looking at the screen here. Good. Okay, official introductions. Welcome to the pod. Welcome to the run cast, whatever you want to call this. The name of it that I gave it is right along with Run Man. I am Run Man. Very nice to meet you. Hope you're well. Ah, and we're just out here on a fine, fine weekend, early afternoon. It's quite nice. And so here we are. Yeah, so boom. I guess that brings us to the present, doesn't it? We're kind of here. Let's see. Does that take care of my first prerogative? Updates. Um, let me think about that for a little bit. <sighs> Caught myself. <laughs> Hopefully, that keeps happening and I develop slowly over time a better proficiency. When it comes to uh, angling the cam right, yeah, updates, I guess, right? 
Well, let's see. We're still going pretty strong. That clicking, still there, still there. But uh, yeah, we're still going pretty solid with the webcam here. It's functional, it's working. You know, I initially didn't really like applying this position, this arm position, to the prospect of running. It is a little, it is just a little limiting. But for now, for now we're okay with it. So that's one update. I'm kind of cozying up to the compromise of continuing to use this as long as it works. Okay, so that's one thing. <sighs> Another thing is I was a little worried yesterday when I pulled off my shoes and the pad of my right foot had a region about the size of a quarter where a lot of skin was shredded. Let's cross here, why not? We got time. Que bueno, que aventura. Okay. So I was a little bit worried because there was a bit of a fissure in that shredded region that when it dried from the sweat and everything, a lot of callus was forming and that's great, but it was sensitive. And I was sensitive about it for a little while. It's not very sensitive today though. Repairs went well over the night. A good night's sleep, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you. Where are my eight hour people at? Try nine or 10. Woo, I slept good. It's vacation, I'm cat sitting. <laughs> and if I weren't, I might do it anyway. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I was a little worried, but we're feeling pretty good. We're looking pretty good. We're feeling pretty good. <sighs> so that's another update. I'll keep you updated. If I feel like I need to take a few days off because I don't want to deepen any fissures on the calluses in my feet or whatever, then, uh, you know, I'll do that and we'll incorporate that because we're just human, you know? The feet have to adapt, and that's not, a, that's not a process that takes place over the course of a single day or a week or a few runs. So hey, no biggie, right? No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul, guys. We all good out here. So, I knew somebody, this is a brief aside, I knew a diabetic lady for a long time who, when I first knew her, I think she might have been ambulatory or semi-ambulatory. And then the next few times I saw her, she was wheelchair bound. And then the last few times I saw her, a few years later, she had I can't remember. I think it was one leg amputated and maybe the foot of the other leg amputated as well. Based on based on her habit of when she was walking, she would walk everywhere barefoot or in sandals and did not pay attention to the to the health of her feet. Well, and also she was diabetic, of course, and that was untreated. She didn't really do anything with it, so, you know, she had complications, and I don't think she's with us anymore. I haven't asked about her. I didn't know her very well, even to begin with. She had two kids, though. I do wonder where they are. They'd probably be late teens, early 20s by now. Interesting. Maybe even further along, mid-20s, maybe. Yeah, 
you lose track of people, you know? Okay, so there was that aside. There's a reason why I'm watching my feet carefully. What else is going on? Okay, well, another update. It's been a, you know, over that sleep cycle, my right hip did repair a little bit. Feeling a little, little, little bit of heat, but we're okay. Outside right knee, yes. Still talking. That's good, we're still listening. But we rested, stretched a little, ate, slept. We're showing up. A better way to show up, we'll be going back to this coming soon. Going back to the ATG, uh, the Athletic Truth Group method of bulletproofing the joints, particularly the lower joints of the body, which means split squats. And like, I think I named half the exercises or more yesterday. Yeah, yesterday we ran. Yesterday we took a right at this light. Today, I'm gonna go straight instead. I wanna show you guys something, a cool little park. That's a little ways. So that's one thing that's throwing my game right now. I'm wearing shades because I anticipate a little bit more being in the face of oncoming traffic or just having more cars closer for the majority of this little trip, which is gonna be like, I don't know, maybe an hour. We'll see. Okay, so those are some updates. Another update, a webcam update. Isn't this nice where horizontal cam is cool, wing cam is functional. And I noticed when I was going over the data yesterday, when I was hanging out with it and just playing it back and cringing at all of my gratuitous vocal trills and everything. Maybe this is an observation, but I'm trying to update it right now, actually. This thing that I noticed, which is that uh, so strange to run and talk at the same time. Whew, I'm usually more fluent in the one language that I know. Ah. Regardless, we press on. I noticed that I was angling the screen upward more than I thought that I was. So you got a lot more sky than I thought you did, which is fine. And it's probably a consequence of the lens rotation to the horizontal, the, the widescreen form of this media is probably a little bit less forgiving when it comes to angling up or down, and that's fine. Something to adjust to. I noticed it yesterday. I'm talking about it today. Tomorrow or a week, a month or a year from now, God knows, I might have stabilized this thing. But no guarantees, right? As with everything, no guarantees. Besides that we're out here right now. Yeah, making it happen. Yeah, left leg feels great. Left knee, left hip. Uh, both my calves are sore, but you know what else? That's a given. Few things feel as good as a hamstring stretch or a calf stretch. <sighs> yeah, so are there any other updates? Any other business minutes to jot down in the old mouthpiece while I've got the attention of my sacred beloved audience? Hmm. I was kind of proud yesterday because there were moments during that jog when I found I was pacing my words pretty evenly. No big gaps of speech that were like gratuitous feeling. And there were times when I was able to take hold of I don't know what it is. Maybe it's called podcast brain, where you just want to run your mouth even though you have nothing to say. The webcam, given time, is going to help me with that as I continue to review footage 
and to notice more and more like, oh yeah, I didn't need to say anything. It spoke for itself right there. <laughs> the view and... Could have kept it to a couple of, couple of less bullet points, a couple of less digressions and tirades. Yeah, I expected as much. This is all just stuff to practice. And I do plan to practice it. I'll give you a comparison and a free shout out. I was looking around, I was looking around the internet for playthroughs of a video game that was interesting to me because it was kind of, I would say, it, hmm. You can decide what kind of a game it was. It was not officially licensed. It was essentially, it was essentially not received well Wait. by the by the companies who were responsible for the initial intellectual property. I'm talking about a game called Pokemon Uranium. Now that game was a fan game developed by a tiny, tiny little team over the course of seven or eight or nine years. That's a long time. It was a labor of love. By the time that it came out, it was a couple of generations behind where the games were at in the initial series, or in the, you know, the, the accepted Zeitgeist series. This, these guys, I forget the name of the company, they reached out to Nintendo and asked, hey, uh, we'd love to give you this game to sell. We don't need to make any money off it, but we would just love to love for this to be available to the public. Can we find a way of making that happen? We don't want to get paid or anything. We just want people to see this thing. And then Nintendo filed a series of litigious motions and made a couple of declarations, I guess. But the end result of Nintendo's response, Nintendo's a big company that makes video games, they kind of brought down the fist on these indie developers. And within about a day or two, the game was unavailable conventionally throughout the internet. You would have to go to weird places where you might get viruses and stuff if you wanted to play it. So, I brought that all up for a reason. Oh yeah, there was really no reason to go into the history of this game. The whole point was, I found a guy, well, I found a few people, the game theorists on their live streaming channel, GT Live, shout out GT Live. They played a few episodes of this game, and that's great, but I guess ratings were not amazing. So after a few episodes, they just stopped. But I was interested. I was like, wow, a fan-made take on this really weird series that I, at some points in my life, have partaken in, particularly in the early go. One of the first times I was ever laid up in bed from surgery for a couple of weeks. Pokemon Blue was my companion. Couldn't really do anything, couldn't really move anywhere. I was locked in with these frozen peas and and instructions not to not to scratch at sutures and staples and things. Which was hard. But that game got me through, man. Super cool. Super cool. Tell you what. Anyway. When the game theorists stopped doing those episodes, I was like, damn! I was the one guy who was gonna watch this thing all the way through to the end, even if he did a hundred episodes on it. <laughs> yeah. So, I looked around a little bit. The next person that I found that was doing a commentary run of that game was a guy called Munchin Orange. Shout out to Munchin Orange. I don't know if you're still making content. I never saw the full playthrough of your playing of that game. Therefore, I don't really know what really what goes, what happens or whatever. It's not that important to me. But it was nice for a few episodes there. And here's where we come back to the crux of the point. 
years later. Here it is. The reason I stopped tuning in to Munch and Orange was because <clears throat> it was okay with me that I got the sense this was a younger producer. That's fine. It wasn't that... It wasn't necessarily that... Hmm. Let's stop talking about what it wasn't. Let's just get to it, shall we? This guy was always talking. He was always talking. I think he was equating his verbal presence with quality. Maybe he was doing what I'm doing and just trying to create a bulk of content to practice on. Either way, it's all good, bud. I'm glad people like you exist. I'm probably more like you than I think. I'm aware that I'm projecting a little bit. This thing that I didn't like about your channel didn't bother me so much until I started making content of my own. And now, <laughs> and now I find myself thinking, damn, uh, what is the structure of my podcast, if any? Yeah, it is a freeform conversation, but with a couple of bullet points to hit. Very expansive, very open conversation. However, like Munch and Orange, I choose not to have a co-host or anything like that. I don't know if it's possible to stream these live. I don't know how I would set up a team of moderators and people tuning in and commenting and my commenting to them. I'm sure that's possible. I'm sure some people do it. Even just streaming outside seems weird to me. But, um, you know, it's all good. It's really no biggie. All this is no biggie. It was just the fact of that I'm noticing. This is the update. I'm just noticing more and more these days what I've been producing. Because I've been producing long enough to have begun having inklings of things that I will probably at some point track more consciously and develop a relationship with. Things like this rate of speech tendency to digress and here's an unfavorable combination if I'm running and talking it's a lot of bandwidth a lot of a lot of people making content on YouTube and elsewhere throughout the internet that I've seen they're also running on limited bandwidth because they're working with more tech and more production there's more equipment there's more people, typically. There's more organization. And by the time that I find these people, like the Game Grumps, like Alana Pierce, like the Game Theorists, hell, like Binging with Babish. Like, uh, who else do I like online? Like the Red Scare Ladies. Shout out to Anna Kachian and Dasha Nekrasova. Ladies. Love ya. Thank God you do what you do. <sighs> well, and of course, Joe. Joe Rogan and his comedian people. I like Bobby Lee recently. Bobby Lee and his wife are freaking awesome. They do a bunch of stuff. <sighs> and they're friends. <sighs> anyway. So we work with this limited bandwidth coming from different places, of course. I was thinking about MatPat from The Game Theorists trying to set up his however many millions of dollars earning donation-based charity stream with St. Jude, I think it was? 
the St. Jude's Hospital. It was the hospital that's known for being kind of open source. If they find a cure for something, they share it, which as a business model means they have to do things like run off of donations because they become, because as soon as they have a thing, they supply it so other people don't have to research it. But then those other companies, I guess I didn't realize how curmudgeonly the business aspect of the medical market can be when it comes to intellectual development, studies, research, properties. We found a technique. You don't get to know about it even though people are gonna die because that's the way of the world right now. See, that's a very negative way of looking at it, but I'm not gonna dwell on that. The point of this podcast is never that. If I can dwell. If I wanna dwell, I'll go back home, I'll sit on the couch, I'll use the few remaining dollars I have to my name to buy some really hard drugs and I'll die. That's an option, believe it or not. That's not what we do here. We're trying to do the other thing. Trying to fi- trying to, we're trying to make a play. We're trying to do something that, th- that there's meaning in. So far, I've found tremendous meaning in this podcast. I'm so happy you're here with me. I mean, no one right now as I'm speaking, but in the future, someone's going to hear this. Yeah. That's what I think. Someone, I'm almost certain of it, if I do my job right, somebody, somebody's life is gonna come up a notch. Someone's gonna feel supported or comforted, maybe for the first time in their entire life. And it's worth it even if it just reaches one person on death row who was falsely Convicted and assigned to the death penalty. Even if that happens, if that person experiences one moment of levity from a lifetime of being screwed over, based on what I have to say, it's worth it. And I think that's just the beginning. I think living, breathing people who have a fair chance, a fair shake, I think a lot of those people are going to find this podcast anyway. Anyway, I... (laughs) See, I'm watching myself. (coughs) Not hypercritically. But let's just return. Because there's value in what I was going to say. Um... I notice... And I think of... Producers making... Pretty high production value content like that stream. I think it was like a... God... It might have been a day stream... 15 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours. It was some crazy, it was some crazy event. Uh, All kinds of people showed up. Markiplier showed up. The Game Grumps showed up. Jaden Jaden Animations showed up. Babish himself showed up for a second. Or pre-recorded something and sent it in to be a part of the fun. All these people came together all their crowds and their viewers came together and then boom a lot of money went to some people that the internet seems to think is doing a really damn good job with people helping people I think it's a children's hospital primarily I could be wrong I'm not here to judge any of that that's a beautiful thing to have done set that up Well done, Matt Pat. However, you could see the stress. Everything had to be timed well. They're handing people off all the time. All the wiring, all the networking, all the last minute dropouts and connection failures. You're not gonna catch me doing that, guys. (laughs) I say now, I doubt it. But I do want to make my little dent. By the way, we're almost to the park. And also, by the way, over there, beyond that vineyard, yeah, you can see it. Beyond that vineyard, those hills, that's a big old park. It's an awesome park. 
and I got to get up in there one of these days. By the way, you guys let me know if my camera management is a little bit better. I don't know what to tell you about the tilt and the roll I am running. Uh, the camera's going to tilt. I haven't been seasick watching this. I've watched every episode that I've put up so far. I have not gotten seasick even once, but it's my content, so maybe that's it. Anyway. So yeah, these bandwidth things, right? I was going to make a point earlier, and I'll return to it now just briefly, and put a bow on that thought. We're... I guess we're officially into the observations thing right now, since these are ongoing things, such as camera work and all that stuff. I was talking about the way that I talk. Munch and Orange talks a thousand words a minute all the time. It got in the way of the gameplay. Some people would be comforted by that. Sometimes I am comforted by YouTubers and Let's Players and things, and I have them on in the background, but I'm not really paying attention to what they're doing. Usually it's a bit more of a split, where 15 to 50 percent of what I'm of what I'm operating on goes to the screen that holds my Let's Players doing their thing, and I'm also doing a video game or doing a little writing or exercise is a big one weights and stuff anyway um so the thing that I was coming to was uh I noticed the conjunction of these I'm not going to call them flaws places to develop one my rate of speech two my compression of words based on how much breath is remaining. Time to develop a relationship between my diaphragm and my mouth and mind that I just... Whew, I just never gave it this much attention before. I'm stretching new muscles here. It's cool. But uh, now I can join that with... <sighs> I think I lost it. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, if it's if it's meant to come back, it'll come back. It'll find its way if it's important. Uh, there's no loss here. Oh yeah, the weekend. So the park would be pretty frequented by now. Okay, well, I hadn't thought of that. Time check. How about that? Oh God. Ah. Uh, it is 1242. Okay, well, 